all about how you became a remarkable woman. I and do. Yes. Send them right here to the ARW Pharmacy, where we specialize in helping a woman become a remarkable woman. I'll do that. I need you. I need you. I need you. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Now we want to talk a little bit about another component of the ministry, and that's our boundaries component. When we talk about boundaries, we look at things like drawing that line in the sand. So often we allow people to treat us any kind of way, to talk to us any kind of way, and sisters, that is not allowed. So you have to learn how to set your boundaries. You have to learn how to prioritize. You have to learn how to say no. Do you know that half of the things on your plate should not be there? They're only there because you could not say no? So this afternoon, Afternoon, Valerie Miller is going to talk to us about boundaries. You know, you said something, the word no. No is such a small word, but it's so hard to say. Before I came into Remarkable Women, I didn't know how to say no. I said yes to everything and to everybody. I was a superwoman. Well, I thought I was, anyway. But to be honest, I had so much on my plate, I was so consumed with everybody else's stuff that I lost me. Who am I? You know, sometimes, oh yeah, I'm a wife, I'm a mother, I'm a sister, I'm a daughter, and all of this stuff that comes with it. But this ministry taught me how to say, no, enough. Let somebody else do it. Take your stuff back. I'm important. I am important. I love myself now. I'm not that superwoman. I have taken that ass off my shirt. It is gone. And that's what this ministry has done. It has taught me how to say no. Yes. And we've all burned our superwoman t-shirts. Burned. Gone. Forever. Not coming back. All right. Honoring your temple. How to take care of you and the body that God gave you. Sometimes we don't do such a good job at taking care of our bodies. So we have to learn how to do that. We have to learn how to eat. We have to learn how to watch our diet. We have to learn how to drink water. We have to learn just how to relax. So often we go and go and go and go that we don't take time for us. So I asked today if um, Annette Butler, remarkable woman, Annette Butler, will come and talk to us about honoring your temple. We just heard, didn't we, all the things the women do. We take care of everybody but ourselves. I wonder if you realize that that body that you have is a gift from God. Don't believe me? Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 6, 19. I read it. I had to. I was falling apart when I first came to the Remarkable Women from doing so much for so many different people. I didn't do anything for myself. Didn't know what it was to go and have a mammogram. Didn't have a pap smear. Didn't have a physical. Didn't take care of my teeth. All was doing something for someone else. But it comes a time it came a time for me in my transformation to say, hey, what about me? Literally falling apart. So what did I do? I did all of those things I mentioned, got all of my examinations and all. Then I learned that you need some me time. You need to meditate. You need to do a little yoga. Uh, <clears throat> and I love to line dance, shake it all off. You get rid of that tension. You get rid of all of that. You just can't go around not honoring what God gave you. He gave you this. And you say, Lord, I love you. Don't you love your body? Think on that. That was my transformation. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Miss Annette. Thank you. Also, we have to look at how we handle money. You know, ladies, we love a nice-looking purse 
a nice pocketbook that we can carry. But you know what? That pocketbook is no good if you spend a thousand dollars for it and you broke. God does not intend for us to be broke. So in the Remarkable Women program, we learn how to handle our money, how to handle our pocketbook. We talk about money. So I asked Sister Joyce if she would again talk to us about handling our pocketbook. During the Remarkable Woman journey, you learn how to have a loving relationship with your purse instead of an adversarial relationship with your purse. Money is not the enemy. It is your friend. And the first thing we think about money is that we have to put God first in the way we use our money. We have to be a good steward of the gifts that he has given to us. We also learn how to be disciplined stewards of the gifts that God gave us. We don't let our money control us, we control it. We don't let our desires control us and run out and get everything we have. Yes, there are many of us who have had very expensive bags with nothing in them. So that if somebody snatched them, the only thing we would have lost was the expensive bag. We learn how to how not to spend every dime you have. You don't have to spend every dime you have because when the going gets tough, remarkable for women, we want to always keep in step and not miss a beat. So we have to have some in reserve. And finally, a remarkable woman is not defined by how much money she has or doesn't have. We don't wear a banner across our foreheads showing our wealth or our poverty. We want to be remarkable with our purses so that we can be the remarkable creatures God created us to be, to give to others, and to show, to be an advertisement of his goodness. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. I was actually in, just a personal note, I was in the Money Matters class because I love shoes. So now I don't buy as many shoes. But I still buy them. But it, it, it did help me a lot. It helped me a lot. All right, I also want to talk about leading with grace leading with grace and that is our last component and that's a leadership component because we're a leadership no matter we're a leader no matter where we go whether we're in church whether we're at home on our jobs we are leaders so we want to learn how to lead with grace and we want to learn how to lead even in stilettos so Denise is going to talk to us about leadership and leading with grace one of the many things, I learned a, a lot of um, good tools, not only for, for work, um, but also for church, being in leadership. And one of the things that I learned and I try to practice is that my leadership doesn't have to be forced upon others. I don't have to walk around with a banner that says, I'm an authority. Um, I know that I can speak in a still, small, small voice and command attention, the presence, and respect of others. And ladies, we are created to be ladies and to act like ladies. So a man is a man and he, he does things his way. And we should not try to put on the same collar as a man um, to command or demand um, authority. We need to be mindful. I've learned to listen more and speak less. I've also learned how, leading with grace, how to delegate so that others can feel comfortable and confident in my leadership style and they're also developing styles of their own. So one of the things, one, that's one of, probably one of the best classes that I took was leading.